Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's episode of the OFL News. This is basically episode 14 of the series. And this is really more of a special episode that I wasn't planning to make. It's like basically, I wasn't planning to record until basically the next day. But, but it's going to be all good. Today it's basically going to be a special top episode. We're going to be discussing more on this one topic. And that is basically... To the, regarding the situation with the Thunderbirds, actually. So, if you basically a bit of a recap of how the Thunderbirds are doing this season, they're, they're pretty much six and one, which and doing second in the, in the have pretty much on the second seed right now in the OEC. <coughs> so if they win against Miami Bolts, they went handy and secured the division. They lose to Miami. Then they then Miami goes ahead and pretty much took your division. And if they can basically do just enough depending if also if the Snowhawks also go ahead and they also lose. And we could also go, and we can also see pretty much the Thunderbirds securing the second seed and be hopeful to get the top number one seed as Newark actually goes ahead and owns that one right now. So let's go ahead and really talk about basically with the number one seed. Let's really just talk about what's been kind of been going on this season So for Tuscaloosa. Now, first of all, the week seven staff haven't been put put in, but between Calvin basically have pretty much what is an MVP season. Having pretty much thrown for pretty much fifty five touchdowns against four interceptions, over four thousand yards passing. At least had to go ahead and really enter in the week seven stats, so also, I've not really gotten, not, haven't gotten a memo of what the weeks and sets actually do look like for the Thunderbirds, but that's really just, that's really just the one thing that's kind of been it for them. <coughs> T-Birds went ahead and have done, have basically have done that so far this season. Calvin's had, once again, He's had pretty much what is possibly one of his better seasons. There hasn't really just been really a need for him to really run it much this season. He's probably won't he probably won't have a rushing touchdown this season. That's just judging by by this projection, but I'm not sure how it's how it's gonna go. Anyways. The team's just this team's receiving core is is pretty much one of the be, one of the best in football. I mean, you have, I mean, you have Zinnin, Zachary, who basically has twenty receptions for a hundred and forty one yards and twelve touchdowns, trying to make a case for wide receiver of the year. You have you have Seiko, who pretty much who well, he's only missed two games, but he's one of the top receivers in the league. And has had pretty much a hundred, has had over a hundred yards receiving in pretty much most most games. You pretty much also go ahead and you have Grim Yago, MBK Liam. You also have Monster Wyatt, Phil Binder. Like, if you look at basically the Thunderbird squad, it they look all pretty much as stacked as always. They have pretty much Burr and when Phil Barnes has been on his basically his alternate account, he pretty much has gone ahead and he has produced pretty much a lot this season. They have fifteen Zev, they have flow. Like Calvin's basically getting all of his guys around the offense. Yell vet 
diligencies when he actually has been able to play. Slot receiver. Quan. You basically, you basically kind of know the rundown. Meek and Nine Tails, and of course, Height. Anyways, actually, just the it's such really just the stuff to run it down, but this past really week or so, we've seen a lot of Thunderbird. We've been seeing a lot of Thunderbirds being suspended here, and I don't have basically anyone in the booth with me to go ahead and really talk about this, but I want to basically go ahead and look at what's been going on suspension wise because <laughs> it's something I really have noticed really recently. Now, of course, is basically starting. With just the fact that. Really, that they're that one of their players. That we got to start with Monster Wyatt, though, first, since Y basically has pretty much once again. Had that has. 191 receiving yards this season. Overall, some really decent stats. But he basically is done for basically having a 5 interception game versus the the Phoenix, which puts him as one of the top corners in the league. Well, top three safeties in the league. But, however, that basically won't be the case, though, as he was pretty much the first first one to really go ahead and really go off the board and really basically not get an interception after that. But anyways, it, it starts there with him being ineligible to re for refusing to screen share in NFL. And then later on the day, that day, Monster Web was confirmed suspended six weeks, which basically is the rest of the season. Plus, he's, I'm assuming he's also playoff ineligible. So he's playing six weeks for gameplay manipulation. There was also a suspension that was also handed out to Height. He was, he was suspended basically one game for obstruction of justice. And it really didn't really matter to basically the fun and it like fully hurt them. Because Pike only had to miss the we has to miss the game versus the Turks and then the next game. And then the next day he was able to go ahead and pretty much go and pretty much play against the Punishers and had a, himself a nice day. But that's what basically goes ahead and pretty much go ahead and kicks it off and then Then we go on BC later the next day. BC pretty much burging ineligible for refusal to screen share and diligence is also ineligible for refusal to screen share. Apart from that was that Burr's pretty much been like a a good rota rotational man for the T Birds and this in his suspension for refusing to screen share and then diligence is just refusing to screen share at all. I mean I'm not really surprised there. He's I know Jolton is for, for for a bit now, and he basically likes to go ahead and keep his stuff private to a certain extent. So I can tell you just straight up though, it doesn't it hasn't really sit well basically with Jolton sees like an NFL for like other other receivers because everyone's just pissed about the whole thing. But I do hope Jolton sees basically can get do get doesn't get an all clear. Basically, is someone that I do know, but and it's got basically to the next day was that the next day was pretty much confirmed that Burr will suspend will be suspended one season for account sharing. The account sharing suspension once again. This was something that honestly, kind of really wasn't surprising because he was already suspended for refusal to screenshot. Now that he actually finally did. 
I actually did go ahead and pretty much screen share it. He pretty got he pretty much goes ahead and he pretty much serves a one season suspension. So that would mean he basically won't be back until I believe week. Basically, this is this bench starts in week seven. So, I don't, so the original starts will have him back in season thirty one towards the end of the season. But this is but then the next day we're gonna basically see pretty much something that pretty much takes it above the line. Burr will suspend an additional season for account sharing. And he was basically was account sharing with the story of Jamari. So Burr won't be back until season thirty two late in the season, so basically he won't be back until the spring. And then, then we also go ahead and we also see pretty much a final stamp on the T-Birds on basically all these money versus suspensions as we do see MBK Liam go ahead and he gets is suspended one season for alting in the OCFA. So this, if... So this, of course, has been really the suspensions. So if I were to basically give like an opinion on this whole thing, this pretty much was is kind of like at, in as if those teamers are basically losing their men left and right as they've went ahead and they've lost five receivers, or like six, like six were suspended, but they only were able to get like one back. So, basically, they have pretty much five out, and this probably won't be an issue for the T-Birds replacing the talent, as this is also still a team that, once again, this is Calvin 5, he knows the way of game players around the league, so, if some of his players, some, like, if some of his wide receivers aren't going to be out, I mean, he still, once again, he still has Zachary. He still has Seiko. He's pretty much still has Wint, Vect, Height, Phil Binder, Slot Receiver, Flo, Meek, Murphy. A lot of, he has pretty much a lot of weapons still to work with. So, it's like, like, although this pretty much will be suspensions that are generally gonna hurt T Birds a bit. It's not gonna really fully hurt them like as if trying to replace any talent. So like, you don't have to go ahead and basically start some rookie. You can barely start someone that knows what the fuck they're doing and then easily one then there. Well and it can't but but it's becoming a bit more common that they've that also Pretty much, D the DOJ went ahead and pretty much comes in and pr and literally goes ahead and he pretty much screen screen shares like every every team board scheme that's been coming up recently. It's generally I can say sorry, it has generally. Annoyed Kelvin to the point of just he's got there's been games that whatever there is he has been an account basic account screening he'll be like oh come on so this pretty much although this won't hurt the Thunderbirds I think this is pretty much has pissed off Kelvin. Is there anything else I'd basically have to say about this? And uh, not really, but actually, just pretty much this special episode's full of it. After after this whole thing, I think this is gonna be something that. 
Calvin's probably going to go and figure out what to do because at this because he basically can't afford to basically lose pretty much talent left and right because you can only get so many good receivers and the problem for the T-Birds is that they don't have the ability to sign anyone because they're six and one. It's like literally at this point, trying to find, trying to go ahead and replace the man is genuinely harder, basically genuinely harder, and I wouldn't say impossible, but just it's generally more difficult for them to basically go ahead and do. And besides, and. That and these guys are and the players that they lost were pretty much wide receivers. So I don't think basically there has the Thunderbirds have really, really much replacements for wide receivers because they still have the one. Listen, they still have the wide receiver, wide receiver one and two, and some other pieces, but. They pretty much are kind of pretty much limited up in the front. I mean, they, but luckily for them, like like I said, they still have Kremiago, who went ahead and was key in Victory Bowl 28. They still have a few other players that, do, that don't, oh, they don't really much play. They still can probably go ahead and come in and pretty much play. Everyone should go ahead and they have slot receiver. They have pretty much diligences. Well, diligences isn't suspended anyway, but you you get but you get what I mean. It's the, you have still a very good crop of talent, but this pretty much has Calvin basically questioning one thing. What, what if there's a situation I have to go ahead and and have, and get my death to go ahead and come on, and come on. Because I'll say straight up, if if more Thunderbirds are gonna get suspended, they I don't, I'm not sure whether they're gonna call on basically their first round pick from season twenty nine Manny's or Chew to go ahead or or their season twenty eight guy. Two to go ahead and basically come back because those guys are already basically inactive enough as it is. So, Game 5 has to figure out something. Otherwise, because if he can't, this could end up being one of the most difficult playoff runs the Thunderbirds have faced. Because they could, they could very well go ahead and they have to go ahead and they may end up playing FFC again. And the Firecats are the last team they want to play. I mean, all they went ahead and dominated in the playoffs last season. You can't expect the same thing to happen again. You can like you can only help for like the number one seed, and basically, they hope to play pretty much the the Raptors, the Freedom, or the Greats, but or even the Huskies or Knights if if they're lucky, if those teams are lucky. But if you end up going up against going up against a more difficult team, I'm not sure basically about the Bolts because they haven't really played them yet. The Dragons are are still a shaky team with the with the rookie QB. Much the Snowhawks are have pretty much have to replace their talent a bit as they went ahead and they got rid of Ambiento as he's in Canton right now. And basically, and also, they're one of the top rookies of this of this draft class, the greatest monster. He's he's basically gone ahead, and he's pretty much out for 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 the rest of his career, as he pretty much is back from the NFL before being an alt account. And Newark, I'm not gonna go and really give a bias about Newark because that's the team I'm on, so I can't really say anything. I can't, I can't be talking shit. But, but aside from that, that's really what you're going at and you're really looking at, at this point. Like, this is pretty much one of those games. One of those situations. 
for this team. Anyways, that's going to really just be it for today's Lacombe News video. I'll basically go ahead and I'll... Episode 15 will come from what's soon expected. Probably, like, basically also in this in this week's time frame, since I basically have Veterans Day off and I need to go ahead and get some stuff done in my life. But, yeah. Anyways, if you guys see, kind of enjoyed the series, or basically this episode at least, leave a like on YouTube if you guys did enjoy and I'll see you guys in episode 15 reminder that this basically is copyright of the OFN so any illegal use or any stuff that wasn't used without the offense consent or my personal consent is strictly prohibited you guys already know that and aside from that I will basically will see you guys in the next episode thank you guys for tuning in peace out